Hey there for Dragonfly and me friends. Welcome to another episode of Jean in the Kitchen. And I know it has been a hot minute since I have done anything here. I think the last one was either one of my salad dressings, dry herbs, or my stuffed zucchini boats. So the tomatoes have just take have been taking their own sweet time to ripen, and that is primarily because we have had such cool evenings. Um, so tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, those type of crops need hot days as well as nice warm nights. Uh, for instance, last night I think we got down to 59. So tomatoes are like, no! But if this is your first time here, welcome, welcome. I'm Jean Roman and this is for Dragonflies and Me. Uh, you may be watching this either at my blog or at my YouTube channel. So today I'm super excited. I have everything from my garden here today. So we are making homemade fresh salsa. This recipe uh, can also be found in my cookbook, Lovingly Seasoned Eats and Treats. Many of you have this cookbook. There's actually over 30,000 sold across Canada and the US. And But if you don't have a copy, you can certainly buy your own copy or download a PDF of it at my blog at fordragonfliesandme.com. Um, incredible cookbook, almost a thousand recipes, a hundred of my own in here. Um, and a great canning section, almost 100 recipes. So this recipe, if you own my cookbook, uh, can be found on page 411 and is the Mexican style salsa. However, this recipe in my cookbook is a large batch. Uh, it will actually make you eight quarts or 16 pints. Uh, so I want to show you real quickly for those of you who may be new to uh, canning. This is a pint and that holds two cups of product. This is a quart and it holds four cups of product. So depending on the size of your family, how much you want to open at a time, I generally always did it in pints, but you can do whatever you want. I do not recommend freezing this recipe. It just is not a freezer recipe. Um, you can eat it. It's absolutely phenomenal fresh and it is super delicious canned as well. So um, right now I have already got the, I've already prepared the tomatoes, onions, garlic, and jalapenos uh, to put into my food chopper. This is a very easy recipe to create your own versions, uh, you know, using this as a base and then incorporate other, uh, other maybe hotter peppers. Um, if you want it really mild, just kind of neutral, like a nice medium salsa, which is what I like. And if you're a hot person, you want could add habaneros or other peppers. I do not have that in my recipe. You will have to like play around with it um, and adjust it for yourself. So I took this recipe from my cookbook again, which is a large batch that will make um, 16 pints, which is 32 cups. Uh, and I cut it down just a little bit more in half. And the reason I did that primarily was um, it's just the two of us and then the boys will be back next week. So we're gonna eat a lot of this and it will keep in the fridge for about a week. Uh, five days is probably your best. But um, I only had about half the tomatoes. So it calls for 26 large tomatoes. I had the equivalent of about 10 large tomatoes. So I kind of just adjusted it a little bit. So and you can do the same. So with the herbs and whatnot. But I'm super excited as well because this is my fresh oregano from the garden. I, my cilantro is long past. Um, it bolted really early this year, surprisingly enough. But this is my own dried oregano and cilantro. So, so excited. And if you missed my uh, YouTube video on how to dry your own herbs, you'll want to go back a couple episodes and definitely check that out. I'll put a link in the description below as well as at my blog. So if you are a first time person here, again, welcome. What I generally do here at my video is I prepare the dish in front of you and then I direct you over to my blog at fordragonfliesandme.com where you will get the complete list of ingredients as well as the instructions. So don't worry about taking notes. Um, I'm not gonna give you real quantities here. Like I said, I'm gonna direct you over to my blog and then you can find this recipe as well as a plethora of other incredible recipes, both from my cookbook and new recipes that will be coming in my new cookbook. I promise I should have that ready for the holidays. My goal was for Mother's Day, but I unfortunately am not that pro, uh, proficient in Canva, and that is what I'm trying to work in. So I'm actually taking a class. So 
So I am using a food processor, but like I said, this recipe is really easy to um, create variation. So do you like your salsa thick and chunky, or do you want it almost like more of a, like a, a, like a puree? That's entirely up to you and how much you pulse it on your food, in your food processor. So I am going to put this, these ingredients, the tomatoes, onions, garlic, and jalapenos in this. The tomatoes that I've used are a combination of Mountain Fresh, my own super Italian paste, as well as some uh, Marzano Romas. Uh, as you all know, I love my heirlooms. The Mountain Fresh is not an heirloom, but it is a tomato that I sell at the farmer's market. Several of my Amish friends grow them, and they are the absolute best hybrid tomato if you are, you know, want a, a little bit of that as well as the heirlooms. So this uh, recipe is super easy. Like I said, these four ingredients, tomatoes, onions, garlic, and jalapenos, and then some lemon juice, some oil. I do not use olive oil in this. It is too strong of a flavor. I like canola. So that is what I recommend. And then I have some cilantro, some oregano, and a little bit of pink Himalayan salt. And I'm gonna combine all that. I do recommend once this is done, you let it set for about an hour so that the flavors really combine. Uh, some of you may be asking, well, I have all these fresh herbs. I want to use my fresh herbs in, uh, in exchange for the dry herbs. Well, that is a super easy thing to do. It will take a little bit longer for those, uh, the, the, the flavorings to blend, I think. Uh, but if you want to, it is an easy ratio, so three to one. So if you have um, one cup of fresh herbs, it is going to be about a third of your dry. So it's always three to one. Um, and I have that in my dried herb blog on when, when and how to dry your herbs. So those comparisons are in there as well. So I am going to use the big chopper blade in my uh, container and I am going to put the lid on it. I've rinsed it out to make sure. I am going to make sure about that lid is not going on there. This is for professionals only. I'm just kidding. I'm making it look like that though. Okay. Okay, there we go. Hmm. Not sure if I don't have that on right. I think I should have tested this before I started my video. Sorry about this, friends. So let me get that in there a little bit better, maybe. There we go. Check that out. Put that in there. Oh, there we go. I had it on backwards. It's been a minute since I fixed it. Okay, so there we go. There we go, Presto Magico. So, before I put the lid on it, I am actually going to toss some of this in there. And does it matter if you put uh, what you put in? No, because I'm actually going to transfer the product that I put in here into a bowl. And I'm actually going to put some of the seasonings in there as well. I'm gonna get my first um, and oh, should have had that down there first. Um, so I'm gonna put the lid back on here. And then on pulse, I'm gonna start blending this. So here we go. So just so you know, we I do like a little more chunky, but my boys and Dave all prefer it pureed. So Majority rules here, so I'm going to be correcting them. As you can see, it's chopping up nicely. And I am going to take that out now, and as you can see, beautiful. Nice consistency. So, of course, this is mostly the onions and the... Um, peppers and actually I can see some things that did not puree as nicely as I like so I'm actually going to take a spoon and grab some those are some big hunks of garlic and I definitely want those pureed nobody wants to bite in well into a big hunk of garlic so you do want to just kind of check it make sure if you see any big hunks because there are a lot of ingredients here so I'm going to put a little bit more in there a little bit more um, and then I'm going to add my lemon juice now. So I'm going to put my oil in this one as well. Scrape all of it out. 
And then I'm gonna put some more tomatoes in there. Oops, Ooh, Frank's down there. Gonna heat that up. Okay, so let's do that now. As you can see, the most time consuming part of this is chopping all the vegetables. But if you chop it all at once, put it all in a big bowl, and then all you gotta do is throw it in together. So so I really make this kind of a slurry, which again is how my family likes it. And I'm gonna actually put that in there. So pour that in there. Okay, very nice. All of those garlics I can see are chopped up nicely. I'm going to put more of this in there and then I'm actually going to add my spices as well. So there we go, put that in there. And put a few more tomatoes, add a little more moisture. Oh. Again, the most time consuming uh, part of this is the coffee. And you may be asking, well, I don't want to make that much either. I don't want to make that big of a batch. And you don't have to. This, e this recipe is really easy to downsize. So there we go. You can see that one's darker with all the herbs in it. Let's put that back on there. And I think we can safely put the rest of these ingredients, as well as the juice, into the food processor. So yum. And uh, when I, I, at my blog, I will show you um, also like the chopping of the, um, the vegetables, like how to quarter it. You do not have to cut them small. I mean, you could literally um, cut your tomatoes into quarters and because the food processor is going to do everything. So here, let's see. Also the garlic, if you uh, like it a little less garlicky, you do not have to add all the garlic. You can simply uh, minus a little bit of that. And so here we go. I mean, that's it, friends. It's super easy. Like I said, the most time consuming part of this is the chopping. I picked my jalapenos from the garden and I actually would like a little bit more jalapeno in here. I'm gonna taste this. So I'm gonna pour it into this bowl so you can see how beautiful it is. So that's a lot of salt, so I'm gonna give some to my friends. But I could can this as well. So there we go. And my son, Aaron, who you guys often see in the videos, is standing behind the camera looking, having like, it with like deep, hungry eyes at this, what do you guys have a shirt on? So I can't even call him in to do, do a taste test for all you guys. So I guess I get to do the first taste test. It's been a minute since Aaron's done a video with me, right buddy? Yeah. <laughs> all right, so here we go. Okay, fabulous. And it is, whoo, it's got a little bit of spice to it. So this is another thing I want to tell you guys about how hot you want it. So when I cut my jalapenos, I left the seeds in. If you don't want it as hot, take the seeds out. I love jalapenos. When I make my nachos, I want a jalapeno with seeds in every bite. But friends, this is it. Uh, this is so easy and we are going to enjoy some fresh sauce. I'm gonna put it in the fridge and we'll let everybody taste to see if they think that I need to add anything else. Um, if it's too hot, I can add a little bit more uh, lemon juice to kind of tone it down. But I think everybody's gonna like it because it's, it's super delicious. But friends, um, if you're interested in finding out how to can this, I have this recipe on my blog as well. And I am so grateful for y'all to come on out here and visit me at my blog. We are going to be busier here at the YouTube channel with recipes as my garden is continually bursting at the seams. Follow me at Instagram and Facebook for live videos, uh, tours of my garden and what's growing, as well as live videos of me at the farmer's market and what me and Aaron have there. And uh, other than that, friends, like I always say, uh, thank you so much for being here and be sure to eat fresh, shop local, and have a happy day. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button and like button and give me some feedback. How do you make your salsa?
Do you add anything differently to yours? So friends, have a happy day. And we'll see you next time, either in the kitchen or the garden.